Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today in our painting, we're gonna do a lot of waterfalls, maybe one in the distance, and then quite a few of them coming forward. It should be a lot of fun. And if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for future painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now I'm just finishing up a basic sketch, just a little gray on the filbert brush. And before I did that, I put some clear gel and white from about there to there. All right, now let's grab our little one inch brush and some, look at this, some blue and white. You could use a two inch, we just don't have a whole lot of space to cover today, so one inch will we'll do just, just fine. I've got, I don't even know if you can see those, I did very light sketching of some pine trees, which I'm going to paint kind of around at this point, and just, maybe just a little darker at the top. This gives us just enough sky with a lot of contrast, because we'll put these trees in fairly dark and then highlight them nice and bright. Should be pretty. There you go, just simply not much. Now we're gonna work on our underpainting up here. You see I, well, roughly sketched in, barely counts. Roughly sketched in a waterfall. And now I'm gonna just bring some of this paint up and I brought my sky over to the left here so that if I leave some of it showing, then at least the canvas isn't just white. There, and I will go ahead and fill all this in and try to kind of see my sketch still. Good. This is very, very, very far away. So you want it to be, you want it to be nice and soft. We can always grab the same one inch brush we were using. This does have clear gel up here. I did put it up here, mainly because I knew this area was going to be soft. We can always wipe it with a paper towel if it becomes uncontrollable later. That's always, always an option. You don't, don't have to worry about it. While we're here, let me grab just a little yellow onto our brush, a little green, but mostly that gray, yellow and gray, a little green. <laughs> well, this will be a fun color. Let's start shaping what feel like some trees and stuff out here, even with this just light color. And then you kind of come back in, pop a little, <laughs> little bit of umber and green, whacking the easel with my palette. Look at that, see that? This is what you can do for a nice far away effect. It should look very misty this way. Now with a very bright yellow, although soft yellow, I'm going to just drop in some leaves up here. You see this? It's very bright. The color is not dull. It's not dark, but it is dull. That's what I meant to say. It's not a lot of, it's not a lot of vibrant, shocking color. It's just nice and light. There we go. And see, I'm pushing, I put a little waterfall just with some white and it just mixed with the brown back there and I'm pushing it back. This may seem like, you know, why am I even dealing with this? Why don't I just scrub over this and if I want to push it back and move on to the next thing? Well, I think this area of the painting is going to be more important than you might think. I think what it's going to do is add a little extra uh, misty layer, a little extra depth, and maybe a little mystery in the background. And I think that would look nice. So that's why I'm going to, so I'm kind of showing you why, how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it. And I think it'll really make the painting special. So let's wait, wait to the end and see, see if I'm right. Now we're just going to drop in some of our evergreens. We did plan to do them all along. So you see it helps to plan. This area is all, all empty. Now, and this is going to be okay for the first couple minutes, but if things start building up a lot of slippery paint, like if all these things get really wet and you can't put more paint on top, take just a minute and scrub the area with a paper towel and you'll be a lot happier. <laughs> Here's our palette. Let's see the palette here. I've got just a bunch of everything. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's an interesting way to mix there, isn't it? Just Run your brush right through all the color and whatever comes out is fine. <laughs> I'll teach you how to be loose, that's for sure. That's all right because the, the color is not the main thing here. I'm mostly interested in a variety of colors and some variety of shapes. That's why I'm kind of using my filbert brush in such a scrubby, scratchy way. <laughs> nice on all of these down in here, and you can even mix up a purple if you want to, all of these down in here are gonna be kind of mushed together. So be very loose. Leaves nice in and out pockets. That's the negative space, that's always good. Some are fuzzier than others. Now I'm gonna drop in another tree or two up here with the, the three quarter brush. I'm just using the edge of the brush. Actually, I want this 
right here to be very thick and full. And then we'll get kind of tiny leaves as we go out from this area. And I'm okay if it mixes a little bit with this background. See that? Because I want this to be a little bit lighter, kind of at the tip anyway. So that looks good. Mm. You can see I just spent a couple minutes over here kind of sculpting the landscape a little better, making it more refined, getting us ready to, to put in details. Going to be a lot of details in there. And this kind of finishes up this one area. This is kind of the last unfinished area. Now everything is going to have a nice coat of paint on it. Now I'm just sculpting in a little tree here. And I like this one because it gives the painting a little character. Look at this. This river obviously overflows. And when it does, it kind of eroded the bank and the tree fell over. How's that? Kind of fun, huh? You can create different little broken branches and stuff. But look at this shape. So here's just virtually dead center. So it starts off to the left of center and it ends off to the right of center. That's important. There, look at that. Isn't that cool? I love that. That looks looks like it's been broken a little while because it looks like it's starting to try to grow back straight, which is what trees do. They always want to grow straight. Now let's go ahead and highlight some of these rocks. And this is going to take several minutes and probably a couple coats of paint. You know, some, this is maybe, I, I call it a highlight, but maybe it's closer to a mid-tone than it is a real highlight. So maybe we'll just spend a minute or two on this and then and then do it again, maybe with a different brush. I don't know, just to try to get us something else, some more contrast, texture, and all that good stuff. Re reload all the time. Otherwise, things can kind of get muddy. And try not to get too much of this brown into the water. Otherwise, you'll be kind of sad later. It'll be a little bit also on the muddy side. There we go. So we just want to always be thinking of head. If you think head just a little bit, it'll help you, you know, avoid things that would kind of make us struggle a little. So that's a, that's a good thing to watch out for. Just think about what you're going to be doing next. Now that we've got our first highlight down, I'm going to come in with my detail round, of course, and drop on a second highlight. I'm choosing to do a lot of this before we get our water in, mostly just because I want to see what these rocks look like. I think they're going to be so pretty. Look at, there's just zillions of rocks around here, and a lot of these, especially over in this area, I painted very quickly with kind of almost random strokes. And I'm saying that so that you guys don't go crazy. Don't make yourself frustrated doing this. Just have fun. Let the, let the rocks kind of work as they do. If you don't like one, cover it up with dark. It's not going to be the end of the world. And some of them are going to turn out really nice, and those you keep, and it saves you time. <laughs> so there you go. Nice. Now our light, we haven't talked about it much, is coming across like this. And it's kind of filtering through the trees. We're getting a lot of different little lighting angles. You know, some areas are shaded out even though they're on the, like, see I put a pocket of shade there. You know what I mean? It's a forest. You can have pockets of shade. All right, I'm thinking maybe right here. Yeah, look at how that just works. Lots of paint in the brush if it doesn't come off. Don't press any harder, that makes mud. Just get yourself a little more paint in that brush. This is probably the last highlight, so feel free to glop it on with a little texture. Shouldn't hurt anything. There. Not too much in here. You want to kind of pick out which ones you want to have some beautiful highlight in here. Don't do all of them. Now we're going to go ahead and work on our waterfall areas. So here's my thought, at least with this. I, right before this, I went ahead and put in a couple more strokes of brown to the original underpainting. So that underpainting was just quick. Just wanted to get the canvas covered. And I put more brown in it because I think I want more underwater rocks. I want to, you know, every, every area, I want to have the choice to do just this right here, which is just stroke down and get a little underwater rock action. You see how that works? And then in certain areas, maybe are a little thicker, put the paint on heavier. Other areas, a lot less paint and allow the background to kind of show through. This is a really good way to sculpt a waterfall. And if you need more help with waterfalls, we've got a couple good DVDs that'll teach you how to do them. Once you learn them, you can, you can come up with all sorts of fun paintings to do with waterfalls in them. Waterfalls are so, so much fun to paint. People love them too. Now with the fan brush, I'm going to drop in 
little bits of foam here on the water. You can see I put a little blue. We of course have our original brown and I think this will just help it to look a little bit more like it's fast moving, right? You'd want to have this and then like go into a calm pond. Oh boy, people would never let you hear the end of it. So when you paint, you wanna make sure it's at least sort of correct so that, you know, people don't have a problem with the nature part of it. The composition for me is easier to see. Sometimes I don't see the nature things, you know, like, oh, this can't be that way just because it can't exist, you know? Like this could not be calm with that on top of it. <laughs> So anyway, make this very, very foamy. You can even put a little yellow into it, that doesn't matter. You can change the color if you feel like it needs it. I feel like it needs it. And what I like is we didn't do a crazy blue sky, so we don't have to have crazy blue water. And, and I think that gives it a different look. We sometimes do waterfalls with a lot of blue and they're very pretty. I just wanna try something different, if you know what I mean. There. Now we can finally put some highlight on our little tree up here. I'm using a color that has a little more red in it and yellow so that it stands out from the background. Everything here is highlighted with tan. That's good because we want our rocks tan, right? But I want this tree to stand out as different, so I put a little more red into it just to give it a different brown. There, and then darker as you go back, just allow it to mix. I put a little green into this as well, just for fun right now, <laughs> because again, just to help change the color up. It's very nice. Now using our detail round brush, I'm gonna pop in some beautiful highlights, some leaves here on these trees. Well, I guess these are evergreen needles, aren't they? <laughs> but anyway, light of course filtering through. And while we got this going, let's think about, think about dropping some grass and different things in. You just wanna just touch it on, leave some dark. It's as simple as that. And we had forgot, well, okay, I forgot. <laughs> to moss this area. We want a lot of moss in here and I just slipped my mind altogether. So let's do that as well while we're here. In fact, it looked like most of this, I kind of forgot to put the moss on. <laughs> and I like moss in the waterfall painting. So I'll take a few minutes when I'm done with the trees and do that. Now let's go ahead and finish out our little painting with some details using the liner brush. Of course, the liner brush makes really nice details. Now, as you guys know, I like to use a color that's not totally black when I do this because by thinning the paint on the liner brush, it just flows over anything that you have down here because it's, you know, you thin it to the ink-like consistency. It just doesn't mix with what's underneath. Now, having said that, we know that we don't wanna do it with just black because just black shows up way darker than anything else in the painting, really. So I use kind of a charcoal gray and it comes off just right. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching.